Okay, when I ask UX people who practice user research, what is their biggest challenge? I usually hear how hard it is to engage stakeholders with research. What are your thoughts on this topic? So, because I'm an independent consultant, it's usually one of the stakeholders who has brought me into the organization. Um, I am either brought in by a founder, because I work with a lot of startups, or I'm brought in with a head of product or a head of marketing, someone who identified that there was a problem within the organization that a user experience designer could solve. And um, that is really beneficial on the one hand, but often there isn't um, a consistent understanding of what user experience is or why I'm there across all stakeholders. So in a situ situation that I'm in right now, for instance, I have a prospective client. There's two co-founders of a company. One is really eager to bring me in, had the initial conversations with me, and um, really admires just the practice of user experience in general and has done a lot of reading on his own while the other co-founder probably feels like it's kind of being thrust on him. So when it comes to the stakeholder interview part of the project, it's going to be much more about building a relationship with the other co-founder than it even will be in identifying the project goals and the business objectives and the target audiences and the things that I typically focus my stakeholder research on. So it definitely serves dual purposes and I think that's one of the greatest challenges is not just seeing it as yet like yet another activity in the process but really as an opportunity to build a relationship well from the beginning that you can rely on and go back to consistently throughout the project. Imagine an in-house UX researcher who is always trying to identify opportunities for impactful research. What would you recommend they do to better identify such opportunities? Internally to an organization? So I think um, that's a really interesting question. I have, to have time to think about that. Um, I would assume that with an internal user experience researcher that there is probably a challenge in staying top of mind with key stakeholders consistently because you're probably going to them only at certain points in the cycle and it's on a project by project basis where you're really engaging them usually probably at the beginning and maybe at the end if you're getting sign off on something. I would suggest that and as a result of previous research that there is a longer term strategy that's identified and that there's regular check-ins with key stakeholders along the way to determine what is the appropriate next step or, or interim step to achieve that longer term vision so that it's almost like making those stakeholders partners in the long-term strategy that is informed by your research instead of just calling upon them on a project-by-project -project basis and not really involving them in that decision-making process. UX researchers sometimes experience a tension between uh, conducting research they were asked to do by their stakeholders versus research uh, they were not asked to do but think they should do. What are your thoughts on this, on, on balancing this? Attention. So ultimately, the way that I see the purpose of user experience research is at identifying not just what to build next, but really how your product and your company fit within the larger ecosystem of your target audience's lives. And so if you're being asked to conduct a certain kind of research and you think you should be conducting some other kind of research, I see no reason why they can't be integrated ultimately and get at the bigger picture, the why. And so 
oftentimes the things that I'm asked to research that may seem off base to me are not necessarily off base. They're just not at the level of question that I typically like to ask. They're trying to validate um, product market fit or they're trying to validate new features for an existing product and so they want me to go out and um, basically ask people would you use this but that's not really how user experience research works and that's certainly not how we approach those interviews and so identifying why they're interested in having that research conducted and um, then developing a larger research plan that will ultimately get at those questions but will also help satisfy the larger questions that you yourself having I think is probably the right balance. Tell me a story about a difficult stakeholder who did not understand or respect UX research. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, you know, name, name, name names. names. Um, oh, this is good. <laughs> trying to get a very specific person in mind so that I can give clear enough response. Okay. Okay. So it's always a challenge when a specific stakeholder doesn't believe in the research that you've done, doesn't necessarily believe in your value to the project or the overall process, your place in the organization, and as such, kind of will combat everything that you bring to the table, will shoot it down, and will say that it isn't relevant. And I really don't see that as being a detriment. I see it as being a challenge. It forces me to focus my research. It, focus, it forces me to focus my ability to communicate. And ultimately, my role as a user experience designer and as a researcher is not just to help the company make a better product, but it's ultimately to reorient how the company works and how they factor in user feedback, how they factor in who their customers are and what their overall product strategy is into their everyday work. And so if I'm not doing a good job of communicating the role that I'm playing and the value of the work that I'm doing to any of the stakeholders, even somebody who might have a chip on their shoulder, that ultimately falls on me. And so my goal is to really understand who that person is, what their personal goals are, what their professional goals are, and how the work that I'm doing can support them to move them forward in the organization and make them into an ally. And it takes the same empathy and the same compassion that we use in our user research, and it's being directed to a different kind of person, someone who's internal to the company. And I find that to be a really rewarding experience when you can finally win the person over. Sometimes you can't win the person over. They're not interested in meeting you halfway, or they just have a bone to pick for whatever reason, and it usually has very little to do with you. Um, in that case, sometimes you just have to accept that you're not going to have their approval or you're not going to have their help in moving the project forward, and you have to find ways to work around them. But I would say that it's probably no different with any other person in the company that you have to deal with. It's just general uh, communication skills and conflict resolution skills. Right. I'm hearing from uh, um, UX practitioners who work in agencies or uh, people who are self-employed that research is usually the first thing to, to make it out of a project proposal mm -hmm. um, or quote uh, after a client sees that. Yeah. Um, how do you position research to prevent that from happening? So one of the benefits of being an independent consultant is that I can say yes or no to any kind of negotiation that comes my way. And I get to choose what projects I want to take. And of course, there's always the issue of having to pay the rent. But ultimately, I can scope projects the way that I see them as being um, you know, the most beneficial to the organization. And if which does happen 
frequently, well, I shouldn't say frequently, but periodically it does happen that um, a company will come back and say, we've, we've really done a lot of research. We really understand who our customers are, and we would much rather you start further down the line. We'll give you some documents that we have. You know, we did some focus groups in 2008, and um, we have a Get Satisfaction page where we get feedback from our users all the time, and we monitor that, and we're really great at responding to complaints on Twitter. So we, we have a really good sense. We've we got, you know, our finger on the pulse of our, customers base, our customer base. And so, um, you know, just jump in to wireframes. And I have the right and the flexibility to say, I'm not comfortable doing that because um, if the problem is not clearly defined, then I'm not confident in getting to the best solution. And that's the way that I work. I consider my role as user experience designer to be far more about accurately and clearly articulating the problem than it is about coming to the right solution because I I feel, in my experience, once the problem is well articulated, the solution is made clear. And I believe that stakeholder research and user research are the two things that will get you 90% of the way to identifying what the problem is. And so any client that comes back to an agency and says, you know, uh, just skip the research part is basically telling me that they are not interested in a product strategy and they are interested in just interface design and I clearly explain to them how interface design is not the same as user experience design and telling them which side of the page to put that button on based on best practices and previous experience is not going to solve any problems for their company and the less expensive way of doing it is to get it right the first time and that's by fully understanding what problem they're trying to solve. So I just say no. <laughs> All right. Many UX practitioners are always looking for creative deliverables that engage their stakeholders with research findings. What are some de deliverables you found to be working well for you? So I have um, kind of a stakeholder research document that I have iterated on over the years, but is getting to a place that's pretty compelling. Um, I was in a meeting with a prospective client the other day, actually, and was going through a project that I had done for another company and the first thing I showed was the stakeholder research report and he just sat back in his chair and he said oh my god we need one of those and that was incredibly fulfilling for me because based on what he was seeing on the page he could draw himself and his company in between the lines there and that has made me feel like the document that I'm providing at least is able to communicate at a very high level the value of the work that I do. And that document um, contains, it's really the synthesis across all of the interviews that I conduct um, in stakeholder research, and it, it contains vision statements, um, the strategy for achieving that vision, business goals, challenges to achieving those goals, who they believe the target audience is to be, um, what features they have kind of floating around in the ether that have been on people's wish lists, um, competitors and the advantages and disadvantages that they have, and other considerations. And based on you know the various interviews that I have and the themes that I hear across those interviews, I'm able to boil down the findings kind of into those categories. And it isn't necessarily going to be things that have never been discussed before openly. It often is things that are discussed all the time and there's a lot of head nodding when people read through that document. But it's positioned in a way that they haven't thought about it before. They haven't really taken the time to document their mission and their approach. Um, and additionally, they are um, really uh, able to identify where there are discrepancies in their vision, where there are discrepancies in the um, project objectives or who they believe the target audience is to be because it's an opportunity for them all to take a step back and say this is where we are. This is 
what we all think about, this is where we all think we're going, and it doesn't happen in so much of a systematic way in the day-to-day -day work that they do. Last question. How can UX practitioners tell uh, if their stakeholders are bought into research? Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so the biggest sign for me in realizing that my stakeholders have really understood the value of the user research that I've done and believe in the findings is when they start to refer to the personas by name and they're not doing it with a chuckle and they're not saying oh this is so silly that you've crafted this fake person they really believe that these are real people they believe that these are users of their product or prospects that they can convince to become customers in the future and they recognize that they aren't individuals, but they start to talk about them as though they are. And instead of saying, I want to do this, or I wish we could do that, they say, I wonder what Amy would think about this, or wouldn't Jake love this feature? And when they really start to refer to people by name, that's when I know that they are bought into the value of this, that they understand the purpose, and I find that it's, um, it's really exciting because they light up when they talk about all of the possibilities and they're using the language that I've given them essentially that I've been able to um, imbue in the work that they do in order to have those conversations much more effectively. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>